I'm Draco. I was born in 650 BC in Athens, Greek. You must have all heard about me. Nobody messes with Draco. Now I'm known as the harsh Athenian writer as my constitution was written in blood. I wrote the first Athenian constitution which replaced the oral law system. Don't get me wrong, I, still, I also did many kind things like enfranchising hoplites, the lower class soldiers. I was also the first recorded legislator of Athens. If anyone decided to break my law, that'd be the end of them. It's a shame my constitution didn't last a while. That annoying man Solon replaced my laws. He's going to pay for it. I had so many amazing quotes, but my favorite thing I said was, if you were going slower, you'd be going backwards. Anyway, since you all probably know about me because I'm the greatest, then I'll say goodbye. I am Solon. I am a poet, lawmaker, and a statesman. One of my big accomplishments is that I made the foundations for Athenian democracy. I am also made the new humane law. One more big accomplishment is when I stopped debt slavery. The nobles gave me a task to eliminate the threat that they would be overthrown. I was born into a noble and distinguished family in Athens, 630 BC. In 594 BC, I was elected to be the, an archon. I also substituted a system of control by the wealthy. That is a few facts about me. Bye. I am Sappho. I am well known for my lyric-like poetry. I was born in 610 BC. BC, and it is currently 570 BC. I feel like I'm going towards a bright light. Oh, wait a minute, that is heaven. Huh, I guess I'm dead now. Well, I can tell you about my life from heaven. Okay, back to the story. As a kid, I had several brothers. Later in life, I married a wealthy ma man named Sir Sleaze and had a daughter named Sleaze. I was sometimes called the female Homer, well, before I died. Well, I might still be called that. I wonder how long it will take before someone finds my dead body. Oh, sorry, I forgot you were still here. Now back to the story for real this time. One of my, ma one of my major accomplishments is that I invented a form of poetry through my first person narrations, which means that I would tell my stories like I was talking to you. I know I have not been up here in heaven very long, but I think that people are starting to forget about me, so I have to remind myself of my most famous quote back on earth. Someone will remember us, I say, even in another time. You can take as much time as you need to read what is to the left and right of me. Sorry, I have to go. It's bingo night. Hello, it is I, the great Aesop. As you know, I'm an amazing poet, and I wrote about talking animals and poetry. I'm also really good at traumatizing kids with my ability to write and get them to do the, right, the things the right way. As you know, some stories I told, or, yeah, the tortoise and the hare, the lion and the mouse, all of which have morals. I was born in 620 BC and died in 564 BC. I used to live in the great colonies of Mesembra. I was a slave when I was young, but gained freedom from my master because he was impressed with my amazing literature. I told over 600 stories. Some say I have many deformities and others say that I do not even exist. I died because I stole a gold or silver cup, I don't remember, and was thrown off a cliff and died. I died in Delphi. One of my most famous quotes is, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Pretty great, huh? Well, I'd better get back to scaring children into doing the right thing. It's my job. If you hadn't heard of me, I'm Pythagoras, great mathematician. I'm known for something we all should know about. It's still used today. Don't you know? The Pythagorean theorem. When you add a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I can easily prove it. It makes a right triangle. It works every single time. I was born around 700, 570 BCE 
and died around 500 BC. I traveled many places in my lifetime to seek knowledge. Samos Island, where, where I was born, I died on Mesopotamia, modern day Italy, Babylon, where I became, where I learned from the mathematical scientists and Croton, where I became very well known. I believe in reincarnation and started a religious movement that believed in self-control and living simply. I am interested in music, astronomy, and geometry. I am very proud to be the first person to call myself a philosopher. I am an early civ philosopher who led the way for future philosophers. I would say, I would always say, rest satisfied with doing well and leave others to talk to talk of you as they please. And silence is better than unmeeting words. When I have to, well, I have to get back to my work now. Hope you learned more about me. I am Pindar, the famous poet of ancient Greece. You probably have heard of me, right? No? Okay, I can tell you. I was born at the time of the Pythenian festival in Thebes. That shaped me to be very close with the Pythenian priesthood. My uncle, Scorpionus, taught me music and I later learned from poetry. In my education, I went to Athens to perfect my writing. My early poems have been lost, which is a shame, because they were my favorites. But I did enjoy making what is said my best piece, the Pincia. You probably would not understand because it's way too complicated. I went to Sicily and they welcomed me at the courts. They announced my work with, and with these announcements, my poetry became to, came to be known throughout Greece. There were some years that were bad for me and in this time I struggled to put out inspirational poems. Though I had help from my friends from Athens. Well, I guess you know a bit about me, and now I'm going to go write a new poem. Tell me if you like it. I am Sophocles, the second greatest writer of tragedy, aligned with Aeschylus and Euripides. Only seven of my most famous tragedies still survive out of a hundred. About 80 to 90 bits and pieces still exist of my writing, though. Here are the seven. Oedipus Tyrannus, Oedipus at Tolonus, Antigone, Electra, Tracte, Ajax, and Philosophites. A few of my most famous plays are my plays on Oedipus, the figure who accidentally killed his rear father and married his mother, and never mind, we don't have time for that. Then there is Electra, where Euripides Euro first created his version of the play in 420 BCE, where my version was made in 410 BCE. Lastly, there is Antigone. About Antigone's disloyalty of Creon's demands when he insists on burying her brother, Paul, Polynesus. Antigone and two others die at the end of the play and Creon's great distress. As I grew up at Tolonus, it inspired my tragedy, Oedipus at Tolonus. My father, Sophilus, who was a wealthy craftsman of our military's armor, sent me to Athens for me to get an education. Another one of my accomplishments is how I was a priest on, of Hallens and helped welcome an, a cult, Esipolis, the god of all medicine, to Athens. I have over a hundred famous quotes, but here are a couple examples. I then lived from 496 BCE to 406 BCE. I am Pericles, a leader. I was born in Athens in the year 495 BC. My parents are Xanthippus and Argosti. My sibling is uh, a pharaoh. Uh, my family didn't have such a bad life growing up, so I didn't have many troubles. I was born to be a leader. I was the first, first Athenian democratic citizen. I had met many more accomplished than being one of the most respected people of my time. 
I had helped I had helped many and democracy carries to still today. I I never had a wife, people think I did, but Ascaza was my living companion, so I never married. But I do have I do have kids. Xanthius Xanthius and per Pericles the younger and Parlos. I also have said some famous quotes like this one and this one. Uh, also, by the end of my life, I helped many people in Athens, and without me, democracy probably wouldn't be still used today and maybe not have existed. Goodbye, fellows. Hello, I am in Pitopolis. I lived in Argos, which is a Greek city in Sicily. I lived from 490 BC to 430 BC. I am important because I am an amazing inventor of rhetoric, the art of the skill of persuasive speaking, and of the science of medicine in Italy. I am famous for my great beliefs that matter is composed of only four elements. Those four elements are fire, air, water, and earth. One of my amazing quotes is, no moral thing has a beginning, nor does it end in death or obliteration. There is only a mixing and then separating of what was mixed. But by moral men, these processes are named beginnings. I am the amazing Phidias, a sculptor, a painter, and the director of the construction of the Parathon from Athens. I am famous for the crystal of phantom that I built, which sadly doesn't remain anymore. I built a sculpture of Zeus and, and in my parathon, I have also made a sculpture of Athena. They were made in gold and ivory. I am also famous because I am probably one of the originators of Greek's classical ideal style. If you really want to know my secret about how I'm such a good artist, my teachers are Argos, and the same teacher who taught both Myron, 480, 444 BCE, the other people say he was also taught by um, Hate of Athens and the Thetan painter Polygonotus. As Walt Waldo Emerson once said, Raphael paints wisdom, Handel sings it, Phidias carves it, Shakespeare writes it, Wren builds it, Columbus sails it, Luther preaches it, Washington arms it, Watt machines it. I have lived since 488 to 431 BC. That is my story of how my life was through the Golden Age. Thank you for listening. My name is Euripides. I am famous for making Greek tragedy playwrights and creating love drama. My most famous play is called Medea, and I made it in 431 BC. I was born in the Salamis Islands, Greek, in Greece, and died in Macedonia. Out of 92 plays, only 19 of them survived to this day. I'm the most popular of the three great tra tragedians. The second most popular is Sophocles. I have many amazing quotes, but my favorite has to be, talk sense to a fool and he calls you foolish. My second favorite my, by far has to be, let no one think of me as a, I'm humble or weak or passive. Let them understand I'm different kind, dangerous to my enemies, loyal to my friends. To such a life, glory begins. Wow, that's good. But I'm not surprised that I, Euripides, the best of the three great tragedians, wrote them. You know, now that I think about it, I'm pretty cool. I mean, I'm the only one of the Greek playwrights that use strong women and intelligent slaves in their place. Well, I have to go and do something important. Bye! My name is Aspatia. I am famous for my relationship with Pericles and fighting for equal rights for women in Greece. I was born in Miletus, but moved to Athens when I was very young. But since I was not born in Athens, I didn't get the same rights as regular Athenian. My family had to pay extra taxes and a fee to live in Athens. Also, I couldn't marry any Athenian. This was called being a medic. But since I'm not a great listener, I married Pericles and had a son, Pericles the Younger. In my lifetime, I have influenced many writers and statesmen, but some say I have, I have also been accused of urging someone to start war. But just be clear, I did not want to start a war. Anyways, one fun fact about me is that some say that I helped teach Socrates. Oh, it's dinner time. I think I should probably go. Bye.
Giyashu. I am Hippocrates, the father of medicine. You are lucky that I, I made medicines, such as the wonderful sleep and health. Those were my great inventions. So let's give a round of applause for me for that. Also, a question people ask me is why should we trust doctors to not hurt us? Well, they take a test that is named after me. It is called the Hippocratic Oath that makes doctors stay trustworthy. But in my lifetime, I taught medicine in a medical school in Kos. I was born in Asia Minor, today's Turkey. In about 460 BC, I was born and I died in approximately 377 BC. Some of my quotes like I like to say are, healing is a matter of time, but sometimes also a matter of opportunity. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. Cure sometimes, treat often, come for always. Life is short, the art long. Wherever the art of medicine is loved, there's also a love of humanity. Plato called Hippocrates the Auslis of Kos in the Protagoras. Aristotle referred to me as the great physician. Also, the time before I was alive, everyone thought I, that pe things happened because of God. For example, you got sick, sick, and people would say, God wants you to be sick, rather than thinking, oh, I ate cardboard. That gave me some food poisoning. And these are just a few wonderful things about me. Never fear, Aristophanes is here. Hello, my dear fellows. I am Aristophanes, also known as the father of comedy. I am famous for my comedies. People still read and laugh at them. I am known for the father of comedy. Weird. I wonder who the mother of comedy is. Anyways, in my comedies, I love to mock other gods and people that I don't like. I was born in 448 BC, and I died in 385 BC. I was born into a rich family. I could eat whatever I wanted. I, uh, I was born in the heart of Athens, by the way. Also, a quote. Uh, here's a quote. Open your mind before your mouth. Also, I wrote 40 plays in, uh, in which 11 of them are still alive and laughed at. Yay, I had a big uh, impact on comedy and others and inspired others to write good comedies. Greetings, I am Plato. I I know what you might be thinking right now. Play-Doh. You might have played when, it, when you're a long, young little kid, but I'm as different as I can be. Do not ever mistake me for Play-Doh. Play Anyways, I'm a very famous philosopher, and I'm one of the most important figures in Western thought. I was born in 428 BC in Athens, Greece, and I lived there my whole life. My parents are, well, my father, Ariston, died when I was a child, and my mother, per my mother, Periton, remarried the politician, Pyrampolis. One of the famous things I was known for is my theory of forms. It is a very complicated theory, so you might not understand it. It's basically a theory that asserts the physical world is not the real world. Instead, the ultimate reality exists beyond our physical world. I don't know, it might be a little complicated for some of you. Another one of my accomplishments is my school, Platonic Academy, located in Greece, where I taught artist school for 20 years. But I have to get some credit to my teacher, Socrates. My te uh, I grew up in the time of the Peloponnesian War. I died in 387 BC, so that means I lived to be 80. Anyways, I have to go comb my beard. It's getting a little bit out of hand. Hi, I'm Aristotle. I'm a famous philosopher who made great contributions to what we know today of science and philosophy and biology. Anyway, I was born in 384 BC and died in 322 BC. I was born in Stagira but moved to Athens for most of my life where I was taught by Plato and I also opened my own school called the Lyceum. My dad worked for King Amintas the third, but my mom and dad died when I was young. 
At Plato's school, I was a student and a teacher for 20 years, and some of Plato's later writings had roots of conversations with him and me. At some point, I was called over to Macedonia for a bit to tutor Alexander the Great, and then I traveled back to Athens. There in Athens, they had some hate for Macedonia, so I fled to a little island called Eubolia, where I died. A quote for me is, there is no genius without a little touch of madness. Hi, I am Aristarchus. I was born in 310 BC and died in 230 BC. I was born on Samos Island and studied in Alexandria, Egypt, and Straddle of Lampsacus. I'm a famous astrologist and mathematician. I am famous for my theories on the heliocentrism of the solar system. I put the sun in the middle of the solar system and I also put the planets in the right order from the sun. I made a heliocentric model of the universe, which has the stars that are actually stationary seem to be rotating because Earth rotates on its own axis, and planets that seem to be rotating around the stationary sun. I was one of the first astronomers to calculate the relative sizes of the sun, the moon, and the earth. My only surviving work is titled On the Sizes and Distances of the Sun and Moon, and although some of my information was wrong, I still made an impact on astrology. My name is Archimedes. I'm a very famous inventor. I was born in Syracuse, Italy, and got educated in Egypt. My most famous invention or discovery is when I discovered pi. I'm also known for my screw. It's kind of like a drill. It rotates like a drill and it pumps up water. It's used for raising water. It's the first hydraulic machine. If you don't know what pi is, it's very confusing, so I'll tell you a little about it. You use it to find the area or the volume of a sphere. A sphere is just a 3D circle. When my country, got Italy, got invaded, I helped protect with my inventions. Like one where I made a big claw and it picks up and, break it and smashes ships. I also made an invention that's a big beak and it smashes ships. Eventually, I got captured by a Roman. He killed me. I died saying, don't disturb my circles, which was referring to circles that I drew in the sand. I was born in 287 BC and died in 212 BC.